grateful to those other agencies who've supported us. And in police assets, that's included the Northwest Underwater Search Unit, police drones, horses, dogs, and the police helicopter. We continue to search extensively the River Wire and surrounding area downstream and out into the sea towards the estuary. We've consulted with national experts in their field, including environmental and tidal experts, and we're carrying out an extensive, have carried out an extensive land search uh, surrounding the river, including some properties around the area where Nicola went missing. Slides have been made available for you to, to see, which show in some detail exactly where we have searched, but it's impossible, it's important to say that our activity has at every stage been directed by expert trained police search advisors who we term pulses and they've been following a nationally recognized doctrine around search strategy which uh, will be followed by any expert police search advisor in UK policing. The lead police search advisor is here and at the conclusion of the press conference if you have any specific questions on a one-to-one -one basis with that officer he will be able to assist with those. So it remains the case at the present time that there is no evidence in all the exhaustive inquiries we've made that suggests any crime has been committed or that there is any third party involvement in Nicola's disappearance. It is important for me to stress that the investigation continues, it is ongoing, and we are meticulously reviewing all information gathered from Nicola's, gathered from members of Nicola's family, the public, CCTV, dashcam, and other digital devices, to name just a few. We're also continuing to regularly consult with national experts from the National Crime Agency, the NCA, and they continue to support us and provide both tactical and strategic advice for the case. I will now hand over to, to Becky, who will talk through in some more detail uh, the investigation she's been, she's been leading from that senior investigating officer role. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming this morning. So I'm going to firstly take you through the incidents that led up to Nicola being reported missing. I'll go through a timeline of events for you, followed by a number of topic areas that I believe are of interest to you. Also going on to a couple of areas that have been highlighted in the press, uh, which I want to explain uh, in detail. So first of all, Nicola Bully was reported missing on Friday the 27th of January after dropping her children at St Michael's School in St Michael's. As soon as she was reported missing, following the information that was provided to the police by her partner Paul and based on a number of specific vulnerabilities that we were made aware of, Nicola was graded as high risk. That is normal in a missing person from investigation with the information we were in possession of. She was immediately treated as a MISPA and then on the, on the Monday the 30th of January I was identified as the, as the senior investigating officer. At that time we reviewed all the information that had been gathered in the days prior to her being reported and as any senior investigating officer does you form a number of hypotheses, that is scenarios which are possible from the information to hand. Those hypotheses included the one that she possibly could have gone into the river, that there could have been third party involvement and lastly that she could have left the area voluntarily. Those hypotheses have remained in place throughout are reviewed regularly as is normal with any SIO running a major investigation. At the initial stages, based on the information I received, I made it clear that it was my working hypothesis at that time, based with all the facts, that the main hypothesis I was working on at that time was that Nicola had gone in the river. This has been misconstrued in the press and said that that was what I said. I said that was my main working hypothesis at that time and that remains my main working hypothesis. I think it's clear to see that the amount of effort, hours worked, resources that we have put into this investigation, that we have always been open-minded. 
those three hypotheses and scenarios have been continually reviewed and continue to do so to this day. But as Mr Dawson has said, at the minute, with the information that we have received and reviewed, there is not a single piece of information or evidence to suggest that there is any third party involvement in this investigation. And that continues and will continue to do so until we have reviewed all the information received. So in terms of the actual timeline, Nicola Bully dropped her children off at school at about 8.40 on Friday the 27th of January. That was normal and she then proceeded after chatting to a couple of people in the school uh, yard, walked uh, up Garstang Road and onto the river path uh, over an iron bridge that takes you down to these fields. We know that because there are witnesses who have identified her and also from her phone data. We know that Nicola entered the field and um, made a couple of um, messages on her mobile phone, one to her boss and one to a friend making arrangements uh, for a play date for her children. And at 9.01, we know she logged into a work call on Teams. Again, there has been lots of speculation about this. This was a perfectly normal call for Nicola to have. It was work related she would never have had the microphone or camera on because it was more of an informative session. She didn't need to sign into it. She did so to enable her with her business. So I know there have been inquiries as to whether anybody else on the Teams call would have been able to hear or provide us with any information. I can assure you from the outset that was investigated thoroughly and that is not the case. We know at this time that there were a number of dog walkers in the area and we've been extremely fortunate from the very start of this inquiry to have a number of witnesses, key witnesses, who know Nicola. So there is no miscommunication about the identification of who is in that field. And also, we've viewed a substantial amount of CCTV. Again, whilst we can't cover the whole area with CCTV, we've been really fortunate in that we've had a lot, which has really been able to um, help us in pin down both Nicola's movements and also the movements of key witnesses, which is why we were able to give a timeline of events quite quickly, but reiterating that we were remaining open-minded to all three of those scenarios. So Nicola was last seen in the field, which we've called the upper field, at about 9.10 that morning. At that time, everything seemed normal. She was walking her dog, Willow, who was off the lead. And again, a number of issues and inconsistencies have been raised in relation to Willow and her harness. It was really normal for Willow not to have her harness on. They never kept the harness on when they were in that field. The harness would be taken off Willow when they entered the field and would only be put back on when they were ready to leave the field. So at approximately 9.10, a witness that knows her um, had the last sighting and that was at the upper field. And when I say an approximate time, it is that, but we are basing that on obviously the times that we can say that witness left the field. So I'm quite confident it is around that time. We then know from um, digital data that at some time around 9.20, we believe that Nicola's handset had moved to, towards the bench area. Again, there have been questions raised about her phone, whether that would have been in her possession when whatever happened has happened. But again, I'd just like to point her out that it's really normal for Nicola when in a Teams call to be holding her phone out in front of her, listening to it. And we can say from a witness that knows her that morning, that is what she was doing. So that would explain why she doesn't have her phone in her pocket, as I know a number of people have raised. We then know at about 9.33, a local dog walker who is walking a dog comes across the bench and finds Willow um, untied running between the bench and the gate. The mobile phone is on the bench face upwards, still logged into the team's call and Willow's harness is halfway between the bench and the riverside. That witness makes a number um, before returning home, she, make, she then returns and makes a number of phone calls to people because at that point she doesn't know who the dog belongs to, 
or who the phone belongs to and doesn't know how to get in touch with people. She makes a number of inquiries with a local vet who uh, can't assist her and following um, a number of inquiries, uh, eventually people return to the bench, recover the handset and Willow and we find out that obviously they belong to Nicola. The alarm is then raised with the local school who then in turn contact Paul, Nicola's partner, who then makes to the scene. Just moving on to CCTV, like I've said, we've got, we are really fortunate in this inquiry that we've been able to narrow down a lot of the witnesses in the area's movements and to some extent Nicola's, but we can't complete that totally. The area at the top of the field, Rowan Water, has CCTV that covers the gate, that enters the field and the front of the site. That is working. The site uh, managers have been cooperating with us and so supportive of this investigation at every stage. And we can say that Nicola has not entered that area or left. We can also say that nobody that we haven't traced and spoken to and discounted has left or entered Rome Water. The second point on CCTV is allotment lane. Again, we've been really, really fortunate, despite it being such a rural area, that we've got numerous sites of CCTV on that road. And that is why we can be confident that Nicola has not gone down that road. Unfortunately, the main entrance and exit to the uh, fields is via the river path, as we refer to it. And that river path goes back to Garstang Road. You can fork off slightly, which takes you at the back of the Grapes pub, which would bring you back onto the main road. But again, that is covered by CCTV and we know she hasn't left via that entrance. So talking about the river path, this has always been, and we've made this really clear in previous briefings and bulletins, that this has been our focus. And to do this, because of the lack of CCTV on the main road, we've had to appeal numerous times for motorists and cyclists in the area to send us through any potential clips of dash cam. And our intention is to review every one of those, however small they might be, to make sure that on none of those, Nicola is seen. At this stage, nobody, uh, none of that dash cam has indicated that Nicola is there. However, I'd just like to point out, we are still reviewing those pieces of information. What I can say, which we have established only yesterday, was that the if Nicola had left out of the river path and turned right, she has not reached the Great Pub. And we can say that because we have CCTV covering both sides of that pavement. So moving on to Nicola's phone, I've talked to you about the discrepancies that have been flagged up with the team's call, whether she would have had that in front of her, whether she would have had that in a pocket. And we can say with confidence that Nicola that morning, whilst logged into her team's call, had the phone out in front of her listening to that call. We have, of course, like you would in any major inquiry, done an exhaustive amount of work with that phone. We have digital media experts doing everything we can with that. And that has enabled us to help us with her movements in the field, corroborated by the witness accounts. Moving on to Fitbit, as I know this has been of interest. Unfortunately, despite many technicians and specialists looking at this, there is no further information that we can gain from that because it hadn't been synced for a number of days. Just in relation to digital, digital inquiries, there is further work that we are doing on Nicola's social media accounts this morning. The family are totally uh, aware of this, but these, uh, this work that we're doing might show Nicola as being online. I want to make this really clear. We have control of this phone. This will be the police that is doing these inquiries and that nobody needs to be concerned or to contact the incident room in relation to this. Moving back to my original uh, explanation of the scenarios that were under consideration, I've expressed before the hypotheses have been continually reviewed 
based on the information that is known to the inquiry team and the inquiry team only. Whilst other people may speculate and spread rumours, there is no evidence whatsoever or information and there has been a vast amount reviewed, I can assure you, in the last almost three weeks to suggest any third party involvement or Nicola leaving that field. However, this is an ongoing inquiry. We've got a large dedicated team and as you can imagine, vast amount of information, some relevant and some not, coming in on a daily basis. So whilst my main working line of inquiry at the moment is that Nicola, based on the information known to me from the incident and of Nicola herself and the information and vulnerabilities that have been given to us by her family, that is my main working hypothesis at this time. That does not mean that we aren't continuing to investigate every single line of inquiry because I can assure you we are and we as much as everybody else in this country wants to find out what's happened to Nicola to be able to give her two children the answers they deserve. So in terms of persistent myths that keep being referred to in the press, um, the derelict house which is across the other side of the river, that has been searched three times with the permission of the owner and Nicola is not in there. The red van, uh, we're really, really grateful to members of the public for ringing into the inquiry. Uh, we wouldn't have got this far without everybody's help. But I think it's also um, really uh, obvious that we are being inundated with false information, um, accusations and rumours which is distracting us from um, our work. The red van um, has been reported that it was in the area on the morning of the 27th, like many other hundreds of cars that morning. We're really grateful for the witness who has told us about that and we are continuing to make inquiries to try and track down that specific van. But from my perspective, being in possession of all the facts and information of this case, I do not believe that to be suspicious, but we are continuing to investigate that so that we can identify whoever was in the area that time to make sure that they can't give us any further information that will assist the investigation. There's also been mention of a number of fishermen that have been seen that morning who again were described as suspicious. I myself don't find it suspicious that fishermen would be in the area of a river that morning or carrying fishing rods. But there was some suggestion that one of these males might have been looking to cover his face. We have made numerous appeals for these fishermen to come forward. We have made contact with the local angling clubs and we have also um, ascertained the time of the witness passing down that road and checked the CCTV at the Grapes pub which covers that end of Garstang Road and we can't see any of those fishermen at that time on that day. But we are continuing to try and trace these people. Again, I would urge that they are not necessarily suspicious to me but I'm really keen to trace them to make sure that there's no further information that they can give us that will assist. In terms of the glove that has been recovered, you'll no doubt be aware that um, TikTokers have been um, playing their own private detectives and have been in the area. A glove has been recovered that is not believed to be relevant to the investigation. It is not Nicola's, but we have got that in our possession. Lastly, there has been some uh, mention of CCTV specifically at the caravan site that hasn't been working and that that's suspicious itself. That is not the case. We have been helped and assisted beyond all belief by the caravan owners in this. The whole community wants to find Nicola and wants to give the family the answers that they deserve. Lastly, the family and they are the most important part of this and all this speculation and rumour is affecting them. They've got a loving daughter, sister, partner and mother who is missing and that is my priority and the priority of the investigation team and always has and we can't be detracted from that. I have met the family on a number of occasions and will continue to do so and they are kept through uh, regularly updated throughout with our progress. There are dedicated family liaison officers who speak daily to the family and only yesterday spent a significant amount of time with Paul. I can assure you 
that this investigation has been thoroughly investigated no differently than any other major investigation from the outset and that my absolute priority is to do everything we can to provide the answers to Nicola's two daughters who need to know where their mummy is. And whilst we have shared information today about specific individual vulnerabilities specific to this case and Nicola, I would ask you to respect the family's privacy in respect of those things. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Um, as I mentioned, we, we've shared more detail in this conference than would normally be the case, but uh, intended by doing so, both in terms of the, the scale of the investigation and the resources and the intensity of it, uh, and something around Nicola's vulnerabilities, that we're able to counter some of the, and I will be clear, but ill-informed speculation and conjecture that has at times distracted the investigation from what ought to have been its priorities. It has been a distraction. That is potentially damaging to the investigation, the community of St Michael's, and most importantly, Nicola's family. However, we've had incredible support from the public and continue to have a dedicated investigation team working on this inquiry and we will continue to be as transparent as we possibly can be. Uh, you must appreciate though that when we do come forward what we bring forward must be factual too. Anybody with relevant information can submit it through the, the major incident public portal, the MIP, uh, the link to which is available on the Lancashire Police website. So thank you and both Becky and I are happy to take some questions. Hi uh, Detective Superintendent, um, sorry. can you just give us a bit more information about what Nikki's partner told you about her vulnerabilities and why was it that you had to then identify her as high risk and also this is the 20th day that Nicola Pulley has been missing. How confident are you and your team that you will find her alive? Okay, so firstly to cover the information about Paul, it's normal in any missing person investigation that um, you obviously gather as much information at an early stage about the person in question, which is no different and we did that with Paul. I'm not going to go into the details of those individual vulnerabilities. I've asked you to respect the family who are going through unimaginable pain and distress at this moment, but those vulnerabilities based our decision making in terms of um, grading Nicola as high risk and have continued to form part of my investigation throughout. In terms of, sorry, what was the second part of your question? It's the 20th day since Absolutely. Nicola has been missing. Absolutely. How confident are you and your team that you'll find Nicola Bully alive? I hope with all my heart that we find Nicola Bully alive more than anything. How confident are you? I have told you that my working hypothesis is at the moment, through all the information that we have gathered, that the likelihood is that Nicola has unfortunately gone in the river. However, I have to stress this because this has been continually misconstrued. I cannot be 100% certain of that at the minute because we are continuing, it's a live investigation and there is always information coming in, but we are in the 20th day, we have had a thorough, dedicated, meticulous investigation and there is not one single piece of information that's come to note that would suggest that Nicola has left those fields. Matt Ray, ITV to Morning Britain, two questions. First of all, can we confirm whether Nicola was wearing a headset at the time she was asking? No, she wasn't. So she wasn't, because she was listening to a Yes. Secondly, as you come to the end, onto the Iron Bridge, then you turn left. So right, you're saying, yes. that's been covered off yes. by CCTV. Yes. Are we saying that to the left is a blind spot, and if so, how far down? There's no CCTV there, I take it, that's been covered. Not on that main road. I can't give you the specifics of the exact how many sites, but we were basically scoping off all the, as you turn left, yeah. We're trawling all that area for any CCTV that we have got, but the main road, that area there, isn't covered, unfortunately. So, so from the Iron Bridge, so from the Iron Bridge to the school, if you will, yes. there is nothing there, which is why it's so important for the dash cam 
because even though they're going to be tiny bite sides of, of information, they're not going to be as good as being able to view CCTV. We need to be able to piece together as much of that portion of the road as we can. And of those 700 cars, how many have been spoken to or what percentage have been spoken to? I can't give you exact figures on that because obviously there will have been more today that have come in, but a substantial cars, amount. Are there any cars that we're looking for that you can appeal No, today? no. They've all had individual letters to the uh, cars that we know have gone past in the area, not that particular, but in the area, um, and we've asked for positive responses only, and any dash cam that's come back in, which there has been an amount of, we have reviewed, some of it doesn't show anything, some is still being reviewed. But at the minute, there is absolutely no sightings of Nicola on there. Danny, did you see, um, did I hear correctly that you were putting SIO on the Monday? I was, yes. Had Lancashire Police missed the trip, Nicola probably went missing on Friday, and SIO according to not until the Monday, I, I, I can probably take this. I, I, I am satisfied that, as, as uh, Becky has described, uh, following the initial report of, of Nicola has been missing to Lancashire Police, immediately she was graded as high risk. That, that in itself is a significant level of risk that, that does bring with it uh, a focused attention and significant resources. So I'm satisfied that, um, given there was no evidence of any crime having occurred at that first point of the report, Yes, it was handled appropriately, but as, as the days began to progress, um, as would be normal with any high-risk missing person investigation uh, who hadn't turned up, had, hadn't been found by Monday, we began to layer in the expertise of, of a senior investigating officer with all the, the, the investigation infrastructure that comes with that. Jamie Williamson from Bauer Media. It took Peter Folding and SGI three days to determine that Nicky wasn't in that stretch of river. How long will it take Lancashire Police and how long will you continue searching the river wine until you come to the same determination? And, 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 and again, it's probably something I can take. We, um, the search effort, both uh, water-based and land-based, continues this week. Um, there are police assets, uh, including underwater search officers, uh, continuing that exercise this week. Water um, is an inherently challenging medium to search and the river wire is tidal um, and flows out into, into the estuary near Cockerham Sands and parts of the river have been searched repeatedly because of the, the shifting water patterns and tidal nature of it. We have taken the best expertise from, from uh, uh, people who are experts in the field around coastal movements of water and movements of water on inland waterways. I retain all hope. Uh, but uh, th the reality is there will be a point at which I need to review in conjunction with uh, Becky's the SIO and the search managers uh, the, the extent and proportionality of continuing to, to deploy significant search resources around the river wire and, uh, and the land based options we have there. So for this week the search effort is continuing. There will be a point in the days ahead where I do need to review that. Um, pick on a BBC. Um, social media video makers and wannabe detectives, have they been an annoyance or a hindrance in the inquiry? I'll take that if you want. <laughs> yes, it has significantly distracted the investigation. Um, I ha In 29 years police service, I've never seen anything like it. Some of it's been quite shocking and really hurtful to the family. Obviously we can't disregard anything and we've reviewed everything that's come in, but of course it has distracted us significantly. But as long as we are prioritising, which we do constantly, on the information that's coming in, that will not distract us from the priority actions that we have been completing. Yeah, I understand why you would ask that. But at the end of the day, it was treated as a high risk missing from home immediately. And the officers that dealt with it in those days had the land searched immediately, which included the area around the bench. So, is it not significant that Willow was running between the bench and the gate, not the bench and the water's edge? I mean, I'm not expected to be a, an expert on dog behaviour. And I'm not either. But what, what, what do you make of that? What does anyone, what, what, what have you consulted on that? We have consulted people and we're ongoing with consulting people, but, but obviously I can't speak to the dog. And um, 
all we can say is that he was running backward and forwards and he was still in the area where Nicola's possessions were, and that's all I can say. But was more interested in the gate and the path leading away from there than the actual water? At that time, when the witness found Willow was between the bench and the gate, however, I have to point out, the dog could have got out from there. We'll take one more question, please, everybody. Olga with from Talk TV. Has the Police and Crime Commissioner had a meeting to voice any of his concerns surrounding this? The Police and Crime Commissioner have been kept apprised, uh, but the, uh, the constabulary has operational independence and uh, has been carrying out the investigation and uh, information stays with the investigation. That's the nature of policing. Just um, g given, given I said one more question and I'll just give it to Nick to bring one more in. Thank you. Hi, yeah. Thank you. Hannah Allison from the Sunday Times. Um, you've outlined what you've done so far, which is great and really helpful. Thank you. But are you able to talk us through sort of what your plan might be, where the investigation will go in the coming week or so? And also, what impact is this having on Lancashire Police resources and when do you think you may... Um, you know, you may look at, at, at scaling it down. Uh, and just one final point. I know you said you weren't going to elaborate on the vulnerabilities, but I've had three text messages in the past five minutes asking what they are and what that's about. So if we want to sort of dial down the speculation, might it make sense to, to make that clear? I'll, I'll t t take most of that, I think. I think in terms of the, the scale of the investigation, it, it is continuing. Um, that will be kept under review, but it is, it is at as much of a peak of resourcing and intensity as it has been. Um, both the search and the investigation side will remain under review, but we we are a significant sized force. Where necessary, we've drawn officers and expertise in from across the force. Uh, our business as usual, uh, policing communities of Lancashire has remained unaffected by this. We've sought support nationally and we can draw on mutual aid from other police forces and regions if we need to. Uh, we will keep it under review. Uh, Becky is an experienced senior investigating officer and will continue to, to follow the evidence, the facts objectively, as any SIO would do. Um, in terms of the vulnerabilities, um, I feel we've said as much as we can about that. It is personal, private <coughs> information, known to the investigation, but uh, foremost in our, our thoughts, in addition to the integrity of the investigation, is the privacy of Nicola's family. Um, so we've said as much as we can with that. So. Regrettably, I can't, we can't take any more questions. Thank you very much. But I do thank you for your attention today. Thank you very much. Thank you.